So I've just read the prompt. It's reminded me of how to earn all the points. It's helped me focus on the dynamic of the couple situation. Now I'm gonna read the passage. Now here's what's challenging. The poem I just read was about 40 lines. Poems can be very long, they can be short, they can be modern, they can be earlier than modern. One of the problems I have here is that prose just takes a while. There's a lot of words. So I need to find a way to read for evidence in light of this prompt, but do it relatively quickly. So as I'm reading, I'm gonna read for a basic understanding of the plot, and I'm also gonna look for things that reveal to me things about the dynamic of this couple's situation. I'm gonna keep my eye on what the prompt is asking me for. Let's start. It said, she had not mistaken Captain Wentworth. Jealousy of Mr. Elliot had been the retarding weight, the doubt, the torment. That had begun to operate in the very hour of first meeting her in Bath that had returned after a short suspension to ruin the concert, and that had influenced him in everything he had said and done, or omitted to say and do, in the last four and twenty hours. It had been gradually yielding to the better hopes which her looks or words or actions occasionally encouraged. It had been vanquished at last by those sentiments and those tones which had reached him while she talked with Captain Harville and under the irresistible governance of which he had seized a sheet of paper and poured out his feelings. Um, I'm a little confused, so I'm just going to take a step back real quick. Jane Austen writes in these big, beautiful, semicolon-y sentences, so it can get a little overwhelming. Let's just focus on the plot. She didn't mistake Captain Wentworth. I like this nice short line at the front. Jealousy had been the thing that held her back, what she's calling the retarding weight. That had begun to operate in her very thing with math, uh, bath, concert, um, just kind of like uh, everything said and done, blah, 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 the last 24 hours, uh, better hopes, something, okay. Um, something had been vanquished and under the irresistible governance of which he had seized and poured out his feelings. So somebody write, writes a letter, he writes a letter at the end. I'm not going to let myself get bogged down in figuring it all out. Have you ever taken a standardized test and as you're going through, your brain just feels almost like a traffic jam, like all these forces converging in your mind? Don't let that take over. And the way to not let, let, let that take over is to move quickly through your reading. Let's go to the next paragraph here. Of what he had then written, nothing was to be retracted or qualified. So he's written the letter. And he's not going to take anything back. He persisted in having loved none but her. Okay, so he only loved her. She had never been supplanted. Supplanted means replaced. Um, he had never even believed himself to see her equal. Thus much indeed he was obliged to acknowledge, he was required to acknowledge, that he had been constant, he had been faithful, unconsciously. Nay, which means no, not intentionally. Uh, or even unintentionally, that he had meant to forget her and believed it to be done. He had imagined himself indifferent when he had only been angry, and he had been unjust to her merits because he had been a sufferer from them. Her character was now fixed on his mind as perfection itself. That's a really cool line. I'm going to highlight it because it's something it's easy to grab onto. When you're reading old-fashioned passages, sometimes the authors have these long, periodic, convoluted sentences, and then they give you a burst of a short sentence. It's almost like they're saying, in other words. Sometimes I grab onto those because I feel like I understand them and I can move quickly. Again, in an ideal world, I would treat Jane Austen better. I would read this much more carefully. In this one, the clock is on. I'm in a standardized test. I got to get the job done. So, um, fortitude and gentleness, but he was obliged to acknowledge that only at Uppercross had he learnt to do her justice, and only at Lyme had he begun to understand himself. The passing admiration of Mr. Elliot had at least roused him, and the scenes on the Cobb and Captain Harville's had fixed her superiority. So, I get it. He thinks she's super special. She is perfection, and she's superior, and he's writing this letter. That's enough for me to keep reading. So let's keep going. In his preceding attempts to attach himself to Louisa Musgrove, whoever that is, the attempts of angry pride, he protested that he had forever felt it to be impossible, that he had not cared, could not care for Louisa, though till that day, till the leisure for, the leisure for reflection which followed it, he had not understood the perfect excellence of the mind with which Louisa's could so ill bear a comparison, or the perfect unrivaled hold it possessed over his own. Perfect is a word that keeps coming up. I'm noting that repetition. It's a superficial observation. It's a chance for me to 
get into this difficult passage. I just want to remind myself, is is Louisa the main character? Let's see. It says Anne is reunited. So who's Louisa? Louisa Musgrove, somebody else. Okay, I'm going to ignore her. She's not my main character. There he had, let's come back up here, learned to distinguish between the steadiness of principle and the obstinacy, the stubbornness of self-will, between the darings of heedlessness and the resolution of a collected mind. So I highlighted that vocabulary and showed off that I know what obstinacy means. Don't let vocabulary words get in your way. They're not the main story of this. You might do an AP English Lit passage and not know what 30 or 40 of the words mean. Move past that. Don't let that be a stumbling block for you. I think a lot of people just like to make that excuse. I can't understand any of the words. My students say that to me all the time. It's not really true, right? Work with the passage. Work around what you don't know. There he had seen everything to exalt in his estimation the woman he had lost. Exalt is to lift up in his mind the woman he had lost. And there begun to deplore the pride, the folly, the madness of resentment, which had kept him from trying to regain her when thrown his way. So there was this sense of loss, right? The prompt told me that the dad got in the way of their marriage, right? The dad was... was preventing them from getting married. So there's this resentment and this folly and whatever that's going on. And then it says in line 47, from that period, his penance had become severe. He had no sooner been free from the horror and remorse attending the first few days of Louisa's accident. No sooner had begun to feel himself alive again than he'd begun to feel himself, though alive, not at liberty. So he wasn't free. Something happened. I found, said he, that I was considered by Harville an engaged man, that neither Harville nor his wife entertained a doubt of our mutual attachment. I was startled and shocked. See, again, nice short sentence gives me a clue, gives me a way in. To a degree, I could not contradict this instantly. And I'm inside this quote that's up here. Um, Okay, could not contradict this instantly, but when I began to reflect that others might have felt the same, her own family, nay, perhaps herself, Uh, I was no longer at my own disposal. I was hers in honor if she wished it. I had been unguarded. I had not thought seriously on the subject before. I had not considered that my excessive intimacy must have its danger of ill consequence in many ways. I'm getting bored now. Um, and, And that's another thing, guys. If you are going through and reading this and getting overwhelmed or bored or distracted, sometimes it helps to just put your pencil down for a second clear your mind and move quicker. You're not being assessed on your ability to read every single line of this passage. You're not going to be asked any reading comprehension questions. So you control what you're going to show to the graders. You control your interpretation and you control what you show. You can skip part of the passage. I mean, again, I wouldn't recommend that in school or in real life, but you're on a standardized test. You've got to move. So I'm, my brain is all over the place. I put my pen down for a second. I'm going to move here. Um, let's see. Risk, uh, unpleasant report. Ill effects. I've been grossly wrong. Fine. Okay. Final paragraph. He found too late, in short, that he had entangled himself. That, and that precisely as he became fully satisfied of his not caring for Louise at all, he must regard himself as bound to her if her sentiments for him were what the Harville supposed. It determined him to leave Lyme and await her complete recovery elsewhere. He would gladly weaken, by any fair means, whatever feelings or speculations concerning him might exist, and he went, therefore, to his brothers. So I know he's go- traveling to his brothers, meaning after a while to return to Kellynch and act as circumstances might require. And I double check, that is the end of the passage. So this is very challenging um, because I have in this passage a Uh, a long description of a guy sitting down to write a letter and all these feelings, people who felt and seemed perfect, broken off engagements. I need to reflect on the dynamic of the couple situation. So my next step is to really focus my interpretation and write a thesis.